Some say you are kind, but you are beaten. There are no words to describe you in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you be mighty in our midst this blessed evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Hallelujah! Look at someone around you and say, welcome to Tune Into God's channel. How are you doing today? If you are fine, say, I am fine. If you are not so fine, say, I can be better. Amen. Hallelujah. It is the season of Easter. Easter is a very significant event in the life of every Christian, in the life of the world. Something that echoes from eternity to eternity. Can I have 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 11, from verse 23 to 26, from the contemporary English version. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. It says, I have already told you what the Lord Jesus did on the night he was betrayed. And it came from the Lord himself. He took some bread in his hands. Verse 24. Then after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for who? For you. Tell somebody, given for you. I can't hear you tonight. Preach with me. Given for you. Eat this and remember me. Verse 25. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and said, This is my blood. And with it, God makes his new agreement with you. Drink this and remember me. Verse 26. The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about his death. Until he comes. You tell about what? His death until he comes. So tonight we'll be talking about seven reasons Jesus Christ died for us. We talk about his death until he comes. Seven reasons Jesus Christ died for us. Number one, to show us the depth of God's love towards sinners. To show us the depth of God's love towards sinners. Tell somebody, oh, deep, God. I can't hear his love for us is so deep. Love for us is deep. <laughs> Hallelujah. That didn't sound like English, right? Oh, deep girl. Romans 5, 6 to 8. Romans 5, 6 to 8 from the New King James Version. Romans 5, 6 to 8. Without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. 
Uh, how many of you here can die for somebody who is very close to you? Don't put up your hands. Somebody who is very close, righteous guy. Be like, wow, you're about to die. Let me go in your stead. You know, there was a burial ceremony. One woman was about to jump into the grave. She said, no, don't jump. Don't jump. Somebody just said, leave. Ah, let her go. She jumped. She was about to jump in and she moved. You want to jump now? Jump and go in. So how many? I know of someone, uh, he was taking a trip with his fiancée. They got to a particular point, they were surrounded by armed bandits. So he got out and he ran into the bush, leaving the fiancée alone. Interestingly, he's a soldier, serving soldier. So that was the end of that relation. He came to me to me and said, ah, she should have understood that I ran. <laughs> so how many of you, just think about it. But he said, for scarcely for a righteous man, we won't die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. You may consider it. Okay, this person is good enough. Verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ, God went through and beyond saying just, I love you. He demonstrated it in practical terms that he loved us. While we were still sinners. And it wasn't an afterthought because the Bible says that from the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Tell somebody you are not an afterthought. Oh, I can't hear it. You are not an afterthought. So think about it. If you cannot die for somebody who is uh, righteous, somebody who is close to you, can you die for somebody you hate or who hates you? Somebody you don't really like. You know, what Jesus went through is, is just more than most times the movies paint that narration that the cross is very high. No. In real times, in horror narrative, the cross is about eight foot and below. So it is high level. So they were looking at Jesus like this, spitting on him. He would go eyeball to eyeball. And you know, he could command all the angels in heaven to come and just show these people some stunts. But the restraint he had at that moment upon the cross was because he loved you. Was because he, he loved me. And sometimes in our walk through life, we, we get to meet some people that we say, this person does not deserve the love of Christ. So do you. No one deserves it. I do not deserve it. You do not deserve it. We do not have it because we deserve it. We have it because God loves us. Amen. And God is good. There's this old song that uh, brings to mind the depth of the sacrifice of Jesus. He says, crucified, laid behind the stone, in the underground, he took the cross, and thought of me, above all. was you. All he was thinking of dearly was you. Saying that I would do anything. I would do anything to show my love towards you. And his son Jesus while we were yet sinners. Romans 8.32 Let's give to you. There's nothing we withhold from you. And through life we walk around, we see people who don't seem to be worthy of that sacrifice. And we tell ourselves that this person I should go to hell. But God through Jesus, took on hell so that the rot of hell cannot be for that man you are looking at. Imagine Paul the apostle uh, <laughs> not being rescued, not coming to Christ. That was a man who wrote two-third of the New Testament. He's an equivalent of a terrorist in this present day and time. Stephen was stoned to death through the administration on his feet. 
But Messi said no. Thank God somebody, Messi said no. Many years back, I went with a friend. Uh, we were on an evangelical outreach to cultist on campus. So I went with a friend to an ex cultist who was not an evangelist, he was the national leader of a cult in Nigeria. So he kept on talking about his testimonies and uh, the things he did while he was there. So this other guy kept on looking at him strangely. He would look at him, look at the door. That this guy might still <laughs> be dangerous. If he could do all of this, he can come for me. So I kept on looking at my friend. Calm down. All things are passed away. Most times we look at people with the high of the past. But now, there is therefore now no condemnation to him who is in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. So when you see that person you feel does not deserve the love of Christ, Christ died for him. Christ died for her. Amen. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that word is key, whosoever, whether I'm robber, whether cultist, whosoever, whether African, whether Mongoloid, whether Hispanic, whether Asian, whosoever. You know, our God is a just God. And because he is just, sin has to be punished. Amen. So he says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. God is a just God. God is a just God. God is a just God. So he punishes sin. In this case, an innocent personality has to die. But instead of uh, mere animals, lambs, goats, and sheep, he took a royal blood from heaven to come upon the earth. God is so just that he cannot punish an innocent person. So Jesus had to take on all our sins. In order not to be innocent, for God to append his rot upon him on the cross of Calvary. And after he did that, it is finished. Amen. Tell somebody it is finished. You know, it is like somebody is about to give you a very heavy slap. And another person comes before you to take the slap. That was what happened. A very heavy slap. I remember a scenario. I was in GSS 2. And my secondary school then was notorious and also popular. There are two different things. Notorious means that known for bad things. Popular means that known for good things. In terms of academic achievement, we were known for good things. We had the best physics student in Africa, the best English student in Nigeria. We were going for Olympiads across Africa, winning all over. But we had bad guys. So this GSS2, we were at the particular uh, block of classroom that is close to the forest the University of Ibadan. So this set of thugs will come and beat everybody. You know, they'll go from GSS 1A to the last and beat, just beat as they like. You know, you have to be smart and wise sometimes. So when they start raising the cane, some of us will hide under the locker. The cane will hit the locker. Bah! So they are satisfied, but you know, it went on. So uh, someone in uh, SS2 decided to face these guys. So he took some of his Classmate, they went, hey, he, hey, he, nothing they happened. Suddenly, he looked behind him, he was alone. <laughs> Everybody had fled. So these guys attacked him with the cutlass. So on our behalf, he took that. On our behalf. And then they switched classes that same time. They switched us to SS2 class. They switched SS2 to where we were. So they could contain those guys. So God's rot which was meant for man, was taken by Jesus. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah tonight. Oh, I thought somebody would shout hallelujah tonight. Because if God counts iniquity, who shall stand? Who? Who shall stand? Who shall stand? Number three. The third reason Jesus died for our sins is to cancel the records of our sins. To cancel the records of our sins. Can we have Colossians 2, 13 to 14? Colossians 2, 13 to 14. To cancel the records of our sins. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. 
Verse 14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So he has wiped out the records that contain our guilt. You know, this is uh, very apt because in the human world, this is almost impossible and impossible, really, if you look at it. For example, a close friend of yours offends you, and they're like, okay, I forgive you, you are good. Six months down the line, he does something and says, hey, October 1, 1995, that was how you did the same thing. So the record comes to bear <laughs> again, again, because everything around the human nature centers around remembering the past. They say that the internet never forgets. Is that not it? If you put something online and you think that you have deleted, it just become popular. The day you become a celebrity and you make a, sta a statement that is maybe not in tandem with what you posted, you will know that the internet never forgets. Somebody will just dig it out somewhere. How many of us know WhatsApp GB? Don't lie, don't lie. Just don't, don't wave your hands. Wave your hands. Uh -huh. so only one person. Hmm? Be truthful. Okay, two. So somebody has sent you something and deleted it. Instead of you to forget about whatever it is, you go back and you go and read it. Hmm? Is it good? Ask your neighbor, is it good? So in human nature, it is difficult to forget. It's difficult to forget. For example, uh, you are owing somebody some money and he writes it down on paper. As it is written, you pay maybe two years after, he writes the date. Somebody else comes to meet him and ah, I need to do something with this guy. Ah, no, don't mind you. Come and see the record. It took him two years to pay me back. He has paid though, but come and see how he paid. That is human nature. But the Bible says he has canceled the records that contain our guilt. Not only our record, but that contain. So there's a container and there's our record. It's like a flash drive. The file of our sins are on that flash. So he didn't only wipe or delete that flash, the, the file on the flash. Because in, according to the law, it is easy to steal. You can call it back. You can use software to call back whatever is there. What he did, he destroyed the flash. Hallelujah. So he, they went heaven. <laughs> so in human circumstances, some things are impossible to wipe out. But with God, there's no record of those wrongs. When you come to a place of confession, you say, Lord, I repent of this. I change my mind. I turn back. And I believe in the transforming power of your blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just say thanks be to God? Oh, I can't hear. Thanks be to God who forgave our sins and blotted out the record. Colossians 2.14, I want us to read that from the NLT. I want you to have a strong reference for what we just discussed. Colossians 2, verse 14, NLT. He canceled the record that contained the charges against us. He took it and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. So he canceled the record, the container itself, not just the the element of sin, but the container, everything about it. So it is wiped, it is canceled, it is finished. Amen. Number four, the fourth reason Jesus died for our sin is to obtain eternal redemption for all who believe in him. To obtain eternal redemption for all who believe in him. Can we go to Hebrews chapter 9 from 11 to 12? Hebrews 9, 11 to 12. To obtain eternal redemption for all who believe in him. For Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. With a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not, that is not of this creation. Verse 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all. Tell somebody, once for all. Having obtained eternal redemption. What is redemption? Redemption means to buy back, which means there's an original owner. 
For example, let's say you approach a bank for a loan and they say, okay, you need to leave a parcel of land, a property as collateral. So once you are done with the payment tenure, maybe one year, two years, three years, depends on the agreement, you can have your property back. If it's a house, you can have your uh, C of O back. So let's say along the line you default and the bank says we are taking over this property. What happens? It means the ownership has been transferred to the bank. But along the line you have some money and you are able to go back to the money now. Let me buy back that property. Let me pay the debt and buy it back for you. Let's renegotiate. So that is redemption. So in this case, God is the original owner. God is the owner. We were lost through Adam's sin. And he bought us back through Christ. Amen. Amen. And the redemption is just not what was done in the Old Testament uh, once yearly. It is once and for all. Once and for all. The atonement was done once and for all. Hallelujah. I can't hear it tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus saved us and he saved us thoroughly. There is therefore now no condemnation for him that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There's this songwriter who says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm what? I'm a child of God. Can we sing this song? I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Because I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child. to reconcile us to God. Can we have Romans 5, 10 to 11? Romans 5, 10 to 11. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Can we have 1 Peter 3, 18? 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. What is reconciliation? Reconciliation is when two people from warring parties are brought back together. There's one story from the First World War, the war was going on, and on Christmas Day, Germany and England decided to do Christmas. So Germany first put up their peace flag, we don't want to fight today. So England to put up their peace flag. We don't want to fight today. So they cook for Christmas, rice and chicken, uh, serve drinks. So the Germans went to the English camp to eat. The English went to the German camp. They ate well. Guess what? The next day they were shooting themselves again. <laughs> that is the reconciliation of man. But this reconciliation is forever. Amen. Amen. So they went back. Those who were eating and drinking the previous day went back to fight. That is reconciliation. You see some people, they reconcile today and tomorrow, ah, what has happened? They are fighting again. But this reconciliation that Christ did is forever. Hallelujah. When he reconciled us, we were no longer enemies of God again. Because that day they were temporary friends. I'm sure they would have been looking at the drink. I hope you guys are not poisoning with suspicion. You look at the food to the chicken. This chicken looks too big. Are you sure there's nothing in the chicken? Because they were still enemies. Enemies on the same table. <laughs> but by the next day, they were back to full enmity, shooting at themselves. They said, bah, ah, 
But Chiama, I, I, I gave you chicken yesterday. <laughs> but we are no longer the enemies of Christ. We are no longer the enemies of God. That was what was won for us by the death of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number six. The sixth reason Jesus died for us is to disarm evil spiritual rulers and authorities. To disarm evil spiritual rulers and authorities. Can we have Colossians 2, 14 to 15? This is a very popular scripture. Colossians 2, 14 to 15 from the New King James Version. So it says, Having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, verse 15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Does the Bible say, having killed the principalities and powers? Having destroyed the principalities and powers? You know, in this part of the world, we pray some prayers. Lord, kill the devil. Lord, kill the devil. They are still there. <laughs> but the good news is that they are disarmed. They are disarmed. They had AK-47 before. Let's look at it in natural terms to attack you. But now there's no longer AK-47. The AK-47 has been handed over to you. They are disarmed. What can they do? Have you seen the movies before? When there's an actor, they call somebody actor and bones. So the actor and the bones, they are fighting. Choo -choo 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 -choo. So the bones does what? It runs out of bullets. And it comes out and tells the actor, drop your gun. Let's, you know you're a man. Let's fight man to man. Because he knows that he stands no chance with two hands because he's disarmed already. So what the devil will do is that you don't use what you have in your hand. He will try and lure you. He knows that you have power in your hand, but each time what he will do is to try and lure you. Don't pray. You don't, you don't need to pray. You are now in Christ. You don't need to pray. You don't need to commune with your father. Just come and face me. You know, the life can happen. So that is what he does. Just like the boss. He's telling the actor, drop your gun. Don't worry. Instead of the actor to just poof. You know, they want to make the movie sweet. <laughs> but they will drop the weapon and the guy will go through all sorts of stress. Like they say, act up, no, they die. So he will still win, but he will go through unnecessary stress to win the enemy. But he will say, put down your old hammer. Don't worry about it. Just face me. And why is the enemy against us? It's not because they come from a good background. It's not because you drive a very good car or a very powerful. No, it's because they are made in the image of the one he hates. The image of the one who sent him packing from heaven. So whenever he sees you, what he sees is that image. And it wells up. Uh, the devil has been disarmed. Oh, the devil has been disarmed. I can't hear tonight. His principalities have been disarmed. His walls have been disarmed over you. Over your family. Over your business. So you triumph in Christ Jesus. So what do we do with this information? We stand in authority. We stand in authority. We take authority. We take authority. We take authority. That which the enemy seems to have stolen, we call it forth. We call it back. We stand in authority. Hallelujah. That is what Jesus has won for us on the Calvary cross. Number seven. The seventh reason Jesus died on the cross final reason is to become a sympathetic high priest and helper. To become a sympathetic high priest and helper. Hebrews 4, 15 to 16. And we have that in the New King James Version. To become a sympathetic high priest and helper. To become a sympathetic high priest and helper. But we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, in the Old Testament, the Levitical tribe were made up of three families. So from these three families, priests came out. And from the all the priests, there's an high priest. The high priest means the highest of all priests in terms of hierarchy and rank. So every year at the festival of atonement, he will come out taking the blood of an animal and going to the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is the Ark of Covenant. And on the Ark of Covenant is what is called the mercy seat. 
So he will pour the blood on the mercy seat and say, Lord, I have poured the blood of an innocent animal on the mercy seat. Have mercy on us. But that lasts for what? One year. And when he goes before uh, God in the Holy of Holies, he is not the one in pain. He was not the one killed. He was an animal. But Jesus died upon the cross and went to heaven to present himself as an high priest and as the lamb that was slain to God to say, look, it is finished. Have mercy on your creation. It is finished. It is done. And that held forever and ever. Now, he could relate with our infirmities because he was here in human form. In the ancient Levitical order, the, the priests live far from the people. So they cannot feel their pain. They are far from the people. They live somewhere else. They don't know what they are going through. If they are hungry, if they are tired, if they are going through betrayal, they do not know. But Jesus was here in human form. So when you are going through pain, you know. When you have gone through betrayal, he knows. When you say, God, fire, thunder, fire, that person, you just smile. I was there. And I prayed for love. So I am hearing you, but I'm not going to answer that prayer. <laughs> because my desire is that for that person to come to me. He said, ah, Lord, just blow the person. Let him go. I will not answer that prayer because I am there. I can comfort you from all pains. I can comfort you from betrayal because I have been there. Unlike the Old Testament priest, I have been there. I have seen it all. Tempted unto sin, but without sin. So my grace, my grace is sufficient for you because I have been there. Can we just glorify the Lord tonight and say, Lord, thank you for your sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. I am Shatabaha. If God counts iniquities, nobody will stand. Nobody will stand. In the Old Testament, some of those I believe never came out alive. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of your son. You gave your son even when I did not deserve it. I thank you, I thank you. Because my sins are atoned. I thank you for the victory I have in you. Can you go ahead tonight and say, Lord, let your victory be evident in my life. Let your victory be evident in my life. I move from victory to victory in every terrain of life. Let your victory be evident upon my life. In the name of Jesus, pray tonight. Pray tonight. Go out this night and say, Lord, I cast out every thought and every fear holding me down. You may be thinking your right now that I, am I sure, am I sure that God has forgiven me? I come against every thought, every fear holding me down, holding me bound tonight. I declare I am free in the name of Jesus. I am free. I am forgiven. Long battles. I have tolerated because I feel okay, every other person has gone through it, so 
Uh, maybe it's my turn. Will it end? Open my eyes to areas where I've tolerated eight long battles. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead tonight. Go ahead tonight. It might be a pattern you have, you have uh, experienced, but you have not paid attention to say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes to areas where I have tolerated eight long battles. May it for shit on my heart. Just say, Oh, in my family, we always have a day. In my family, we have seen this. Okay, it just happens. And that is it. But tonight, he said, Spirit of living God, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Ah, yeah, boy, shit, boy. You your eyes open so you can disarm. You can, you can enforce the disarmament of the enemy. The enemy is already disarmed, but what you need to enforce? Enforce the victory you have in Christ. Open my eyes. Open my eyes.
thank you for the gift of your son Jesus. Through whom we have victory. Through whom we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, for your victory over sin, over death, over lack, over sickness, over disease. We return all the glory unto you. And we celebrate your faithfulness. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. And the people said, Hallelujah. So we come to the communion table tonight. Spirit, I want you to go ahead at this point. Pray in the Spirit. says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now this is an instruction. Do this in remembrance of me. When we remember Jesus in this context, we remember his sacrifices, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And all the victory has won for us as individuals and for the church. Amen. Can you just go ahead this blessed evening and say after me? Heavenly Father, as I partake of the body of Christ tonight, open my eyes to see myself as you see me. Open my eyes that I may take authority over the evil one, over principalities, over powers, over spiritual wickedness in high places. In the name of Jesus. Christ's body was broken. I declare in the name of Jesus that my body will not be defiled. My body will not be violated. In the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that I come to a place of fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I was healed. Tonight, by eating the body, I enforce that healing upon my body. In the name of Jesus. And I declare nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and partake of the body tonight. Verse 25. And the 
same manner, I also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, the cup I hold in my hand is a symbol of the Passover. And I pray as I partake of the blood tonight, evil passes over me, death passes over me, lack passes over me. In the name of Jesus, my blood will not be shed because Christ's blood was shed for me. In the name of Jesus. No inhibitions, no holding back. I am free and free indeed. Free to walk in Christ's victory in the name of Jesus. Because of me, every member of my family is shielded. My neighborhood is shielded in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and partake of the blood tonight. go together. Amen. So it's time to give. Uh, you can initiate the transfer to the details up on the screen. If you want to give physically, the ushers will wait on us. Shall we pray tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you because you showed us a pattern of giving by first giving. Out of the abundance you have blessed us with, we give tonight as a mark of honor and love for you and for the furtherance of your work here on earth. We ask Lord that you multiply resources in our hands and we may be able to give more and more for the furtherance of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. We give cheerfully tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
tap in the house on Sunday. Who can shout it out? What is it? Shout it out! White Easter. So come dressed in a touch of white. A touch of white. A touch of white. Uh, it will be a great time. And please be sure to invite someone. At least one person. Bring them along. It's going to be a great time on Sunday. Tell somebody don't come alone. I can't hear you. Preach to somebody. Don't come alone. Okay. All right. Shall we rise tonight? Shall we rise tonight? Psalms 28 verse 7. From the New Living Translation. Psalms 28 verse 7. I want us to declare this with faith in our heart. Or postfully. At the count of two. One, two, and go. The Lord is my strength. My shield from every danger. I trust in him with all my heart. He helps me. And my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. God bless you.